Hi, Gretchen. I like your cast. It's very cute. I hope I get to sign it. Here's chapter four of The White Seahorse. This is called A Topsy-Turvy Market. As the mayor had promised, workmen came the very next day to put up a fence around the village green. And by evening, the seahorse was in his new home. He stamped his golden hooves on the soft turf and whirled in and out of the pond in a halo of spray, and everyone agreed that he looked so much happier. The mayor came to inspect him and declared that he looked very well and comfortable. He went so far as to say on a whole, he was probably better off than he had been in the sea, for there were no sharks in the duck ponds. In the evening, Molly and Peter went to see him. He looked more strange and beautiful than ever against the green grass in the glow of the setting sun that turned his hooves to fire. He ran lightly to the fence when he saw Molly and his yellow eyes lit up. He stood for a few seconds while she stroked him and then he was off again, skimming over the grass in a fine mist of dew, never still, prancing and rearing and tossing his tiny head. The next day was market day when the people from the neighboring towns came to Piscarton to buy and sell and enjoy the day by the sea. There will be plenty of children who want rides on the donkey, said Peter. Meet me under the pier at seven o'clock in the morning. But the first thing Molly heard when she woke the next morning was the rain beating steadily on the deck and the pattering on the porthole as it slanted in from the sea. She looked out and saw that the sea was a dull gray and a little cold wind blew up to it in ruffles. By nine o'clock, it still had not stopped raining. So Molly put on her red oilskins and sou'wester and plodded through the wet sand to the village. She found Peter in the stables where the donkeys were kept, polishing their harnesses. He was not in a good mood and the donkeys themselves seemed restless and fidgety. They kept snorting and tossing their heads impatiently, wanting to be out in the open and racing down to the sands instead of cooped up in a warm, steamy stable with the rain beating on the roof. Let's go to the market, said Peter. Perhaps the rain will clear this afternoon. So they left the dim stables and with the wind tugging at their oilskins, they climbed the cobbled street with its blue puddles to the square in front of the village hall. The market was so noisy and crowded and full of color that it was easy to forget the rain and the gray skies. The stalls bulged with good things, from blue-shelled mussels to ballooning vegetable marrows, to from cockles and vinegar to cornflowers from cottage gardens. Peter and Molly climbed to the top step of the village hall and looked down on the busy scene. In the distance, they could see the village green and the tiny white speck that was the seahorse. Then they saw something else, something that made them blink in surprise. Standing in a string, peering over the top of the fence, round the green were the donkeys. As Molly and Peter watched, they suddenly turned and started galloping up the main street to the village square. Oh, I must have left the stable door open, gasped Peter. Quickly, Molly, we must stop them. But it was too late. The next minute, the donkeys, with the donkey named Urchin leaving, leading them, charged into the square. There was a tremendous crash and jangle as they knocked over a stall and left its owner with a saucepan on his head and his pots and pans rolling merrily over the cobbles. There's a picture of them knocking over the man's stall and all of his pots and pans flying. Uh, okay. Uh, okay. Mr. Winkle came storming up the street, clutching his hat with one hand and waving a stick with the other. Who's chewed the heads off all the flowers in my garden, he yelled. Who's eaten all of my prized daisies? The donkeys gathered themselves into a little knot and plunged down the street toward him. Urchin snatched off his hat as they galloped past and the next minute they were gone leaving the market in ruins. Mr. Winkle stamped through the square and everyone stood aside in silence to let him pass. They could see that he was very angry. Just as he reached the bottom of the steps, he slipped on a broken egg and sat promptly on the pavement. 
The people laughed and then tried to turn their laughs into coughs, and Mr. Winkle got up with as much dignity as possible. His face was like thunder. This is the most outrageous thing I have ever seen in my life, he said. Those donkeys have deliberately chewed the heads off every single flower in my garden. They have stolen my hat and have ruined the market. My mind is made up. The donkeys must go. By seven o'clock tomorrow morning, there must not be a single donkey left in Piskerton. Or, or, he choked hard and tried to think of something to say, or else, he said at last. Then he turned and marched past Molly and Peter into the village square. We had better go find the donkeys, whispered Peter, before they do any more damage. They pushed their way out of the tangle of fallen stalls and excited people, and as they went, they could hear people saying to one another, if this is the kind of good luck the seahorse has brought to us, we'd be better off letting him go. Out at sea, the mare's hat bobbed on the waves with several delighted seagulls perched on its brim. But that was something Mr. Winkle would never know. And that's the end of chapter four. Chapter five is called The Old Man of the Lighthouse. I'll read it tomorrow. Love you. Keep your arms still. Hey, love you. Take care. Bye.